for unique body type and sleep preferences. Go to helixsleep.com and get up to $200 off during their holiday sale. Let's get a check on the roads. Team Hochberg Traffic Center time and Jim Telemonte. It is a Monday morning, so we have no shortage of issues in Warrenville. There's a crash on 59 north of Ferry Road. I-80 westbound at Manuka Road. The right shoulder is blocked with a wreck involving two semis. Eastbound I-80. It is stop and go from Larkin to Center Street. There's unscheduled road work in that area. And then later this morning at 8.30, Work at the Des Plaines River Bridge is scheduled to close the right lane in that area from Richards to center. We're seeing delays on the inbound Eisenhower. It's heavy 1st Avenue to Des Plaines Avenue. 29 minutes, 390 to downtown. How about it's heavy to central? The exit is backed up. There's coronavirus testing in the parking lot at Loretto Hospital. That's traffic. I'm Jim Talamonte on AM 560 The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next in our one-hour heating and air conditioning weather center. Cloudy, breezy, a shower or thunderstorm around this afternoon and a high of 64. Currently, we have 48 degrees. Your next news update is at 8, breaking news as it happens. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM 560, The Answer. Listen to AM560, The Answer, online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app and your Alexa-powered smart speaker on TuneIn, iHeart, and Radio.com. When you've got questions, he always has an answer. It's Sean Hannity, this afternoon at 2 on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy, going back to um, our two... uh doctors from Bakersfield, California, who's a press conference about what's happening in California and their view of the data, both national and international, has gone viral. Doctors Erickson and Masihi. Uh, Dr. Masihi on social distancing and uh, what made sense initially and what makes sense now. So I, guess that's, I guess that's what I'm trying to wrap my head around. Like, why is that? It was needed initially. Are they lying? Are they lying? It, it was needed initially. They actually, I, I completely, we both agree with exactly what they did initially because we didn't know it was an unknown. Now it is becoming known. Initially, when, you're, when you don't know something, you're extra careful because you're fearful. It's just like um, when you see a patient and they're very sick, you test for everything because you're scared. You're fearful. But then as, as you see more of those patients, you realize, hey, I know what to test for. Right? It's shotgun effect versus sniper effect, right? So initially when, when this data came out of a new virus that's causing that's that's lethal, they they went out they went all out. And I think that was appropriate. But now that we have the data, we're we're seeing that ninety six, ninety seven percent of patients completely recover. And those four patients that die, they have over ninety percent comorbidities. Let's run let's run through that one more time. Out of hundred people, if ninety six do fine. The four that die, 90% of those four have comorbidities. Heart failure, emphysema, um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. They're on immunomodulating medications. They're immunodeficient, HIV. These are the people that are dying. You get some healthy people that die, but that's an infinitesimal number. And that's such a poignant fact. And to that end, uh, when we talk about uh, reopening America, we're not just talking about... Uh, the private sector business. Uh, we're also talking about uh, private and public sector education, including at the higher ed level. Uh, what's a good model to follow for reopening a college or university near you or one that your son or daughter attends? Well, I can't think of a better person to ask than my man, Mitch. Mitch Daniels, <laughs> former Indiana governor and president, now president of Purdue University. Sounds like a T-shirt. My man, Mitch. Well, it was a T-shirt when he was running for governor. Oh, uh, okay. My, Mitch Daniels, thanks so much <laughs> for joining us. Appreciate it. Morning. Morning. And so, um, you know, based on what you heard from uh, Dr. Masihi uh, and the letter that uh, you wrote to the people of Purdue, it, it seems like you're sort of operating on the premise that uh, they've laid out, which is to say we recognize uh, who is most susceptible to COVID-19 and who isn't. And we're going to resume life on campus at Purdue. It's going to be a little bit different. And we're going to make sure to protect those people we know are most susceptible. 
Well, it's our intention, Dan, to uh, resume. We think we owe it to our students. Tens of thousands of them have said they want to be here. They want to continue their education. And um, if we can possibly do that under conditions that we believe are safe for all, uh, then uh, then we think it's our duty to do that. The uh, Yes, what, what the doctor has said has become more and more clear as the data has accumulated, but there's an additional factor that's very relevant to us. If you were to look at that data with regard to the younger people, uh, that is, you know, pick a number, uh, 50 and under, 40 and under, 35 and under, uh, the the uh, fatality almost almost disappears completely. It's even yes. smaller than than the numbers he gave, which were for all adults. And uh, here at Purdue and in our surrounding com- community, of West Lafayette, uh, because of the university, we have the youngest one of the youngest populations in the country. West Lafayette, including the surrounding residential areas, is the fifth youngest in the country. The median age is 21 and a half. And 82% of our whole campus community, students, faculty, staff, everyone, 82 or more percent are under 35. So um, we think we uh, have possibilities to uh, resume to be not different but very different um, uh, fashion this fall. And, And a principal goal of the changes we make will be to protect our faculty, our staff, and any who do have those other conditions the doctor talked about uh, protect them uh, from uh, from getting this uh, virus if we can well what what because what measures are you going to be taking because you said you know if you do open up it will look different in what way Amy almost everything is on the well everything's on the table and almost everything will change somehow we may change our calendar uh, take out breaks so that we don't have people coming and going you know going somewhere else and coming back to campus as often uh, we'll probably uh, uh, hybridize even more courses, meaning that there'll be uh, fewer uh, big lectures will be seen online. That, that's not new here, uh, by the way. It's something that's been a part of on-campus uh, education at Purdue for years. We'll um, probably uh, have to forego any large events uh, over some certain size. Uh, you'll probably see masks. You'll certainly see changes in our physical facilities. So we're looking at everything. And again, um, a, a central goal has got to be to, now that we know who's really vulnerable or most vulnerable to this virus, uh, will be to protect them so that they can do their jobs for the young people who, um, in general, are not. Uh, how has uh, the Purdue community responded to this uh, letter that you wrote? overwhelmingly positive if 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 we can measure just based on the feedback that's come in so far let me just say a word about the personality of our university we're we're known for engineering and science probably more than anything but you know we want we've always said that whatever a student studies here we want them to leave as a problem solver we want them to leave with the ability to to think through a, a challenging situation and, and try to uh, help produce a, a, a constructive, uh, uh, successful answer. And so when we look at a situation like this, um, we'll approach it very carefully, of course, but it's in the nature of this place to, uh, to, uh, to not to run from it, but to take it on and see if we can't find a, a, real, world, a real world answer. Uh, now, you, oh, you said no large crowds, so you don't think that there'll be sporting events? And what about sororities, fraternities, and all that? Yeah, well, we're we're certainly worried about um, the possibility of holding the big events, whether they're sporting events or the the big lectures that we've had. We've had a very vibrant campus the last few years, all kinds of great uh, speakers and programs coming through. We may have to postpone those for a while. Um, you mentioned uh, the, the sororities and so forth, the, the whole question of how to set up our residence halls, how much space to create or not, uh, is going to be a part of this. I'll tell you something I'm sure we'll do, and that is involve the students very actively. Uh, we're all going to have to cooperate to, if we're going to create the kind of environment that we feel confident in. And so there'll probably be some kind of a wellness pledge where we ask every student to take certain steps uh, every day that protect not just themselves but everybody else. 
But but I mean, going back to what you understand to be true and what is what uh, coming into clearer focus. I mean, the idea of a bunch of uh, twenty year olds around uh, enjoying each other's company in whatever setting, whether it's at a football game or in a frat or sorority, um, there's an infinitesimal chance of sickness, much less anything worse. Well, that's what the data seems to be saying. It's not that, I mean, obviously people can get this. As we know, it appears high percentages, maybe a significant majority of young people uh, never know they had it. Right. Or if they, uh, if they do, uh, uh, it's mild. And thank goodness for that. Uh, but, of course, we also know that within limited populations, older and especially those who are already um, suffering from an illness of some kind, it is nothing to mess around with. And so... Um, we have to structure things if we can with that reality in mind. I'm just saying that although our, our, our campus environment has the problem of density, we have purposely brought people close together for very good academic reasons. That's now the enemy. On the other hand, our, de our demography, the age distribution, uh, gives us maybe a chance to manage this in a way that's uh, you know, is the, very different than, let's say, a nursing home. I, I I hear what you're saying too about trying to strike this this balance, but I mean you're you're more than a university president, you're more than a governor, you're you're a, a thoughtful guy and big I big thinking, not just uh, the thinking in the moment. And, and I just wonder, to me, it seems that the two keys to life, to a, a life well lived, intellectual connections and interpersonal connections. And uh, I, I I would assume that you would be trying to jealous uh, to guard jealously the value of interpersonal connections. Yes, absolutely. And it's clear that our students feel the same, and I think they're right. That, that uh, l Listen, um, you know, Purdue's been a step or two uh, uh, out front in trying to use the tools of uh, the digital age to become uh, more efficient and to uh, help educate those, uh, for instance, working adults who can't come to a campus. But there's, there's a real value, we think, a very important value in those interpersonal experiences and um, we are, uh, we're, we're determined to uh, preserve them for our students starting this fall if we if we can possibly in good conscience do that. Now, now, is it going to be your final decision or the governor's final decision to open up Purdue? Well the government of course could prevent us from opening um, and who knows <laughs> what uh, tomorrow brings there we've all been surprised over and over but uh, it'd be our trustees' decision, um, along with those of us who are employed here, uh, provi uh, providing that the, uh, the government is, has a permissive outlook. Eric Holcomb crosses Mitch Daniels at his own peril, is what I say. Um, let me ask you uh, this, uh, uh, Governor Daniels, University President Daniels, just a general, I'm, I'm not asking you to address any governor in particular, but... Um, uh, react to this statement, if you would. It's mine. A if you elect people who don't believe in God, don't be surprised when your God-given rights get no respect and provide no restraint. Do you think you've seen that happen around this country during this pandemic? I'm not sure that's the way I diagnose it. I, I will say that, I, I guess just two things. One, I'm I'm awfully glad, I think we should all be right now, that we have a federal system uh, because this this phenomenon is very different in different places and and um, uh, trying to dictate it uh, a, a single solution or set of solutions centrally is almost never a good idea and it's certainly not in a in a case like this and secondly I um, I do think that uh, the governors uh, people in responsibility like that have to think about the whole community and the long term and so there's a there's a risk always that people will overreact to the immediate moment or uh, and, or uh, uh, see uh, the um, let's say the the political rewards uh, only in doing it for short term um, and seem popular now and don't fully weigh and balance all the all the interests for which a person in that role is responsible. Uh, just on the uh, going back to the college front, do you think uh, universities with uh, multi-cajillion dollar endowments should be taking 
<laughs> uh, millions of dollars in CARES Act funding, like, say, University of Notre Dame taking $5.8 in uh, funding through the CARES Act. This is your opportunity to take a shot at Notre Dame. I don't want doing. I don't want. I don't like doing that. They're a I fine know. institution. Yeah, we're yeah. and we're uh, we're proud to be their neighbor. Well, I think it's a decision for each, um, uh, just as it was for each business. Uh, 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 in the in the productive or pro- for profit sector, I I think it's a call for each school. Um, but um, obviously, the it, whether we're talking about individuals or institutions. Now, this is uh, borrowed money. This is printed money. This is debt we're going to dump on the very young people that we're trying to um, educate here and elsewhere. And so we ought to be very careful about it, not overdo it, and it ought to go on the basis of need um, to the extent it possibly can. Yeah, you uh, spoke. I remember the speech that you gave about the Red Menace uh, back uh, It's almost a decade ago now when you were considering running for president. Uh, and uh, the red menace being red ink, and good, good, good gosh, I, I wonder what you're thinking about what you've seen and where we're at now with the CBO projecting debt at 101 percent of uh, of GDP for but uh, by the end of the year. It's discouraging. I'm not uh, faulting in this emergency. Uh, the authorities doing what they did. I'll give you the analogy, Dan, that has come to my mind. Lots and lots of smart people have said over recent years, hey, the Federal Reserve ought to keep some ammunition in in reserve. That is to say they should uh, not lower rates so low that they can't that they're um, that they can't go any lower and that they can't uh, they don't have much uh, of an option in time of trouble. Well, I, I have the same view on the fiscal side. If we had uh, been um, conducting ourselves responsibly. If we, uh, in this boom we've been through, if we had balanced our budget uh, uh, or come close to it, then if you have to splurge like this, it would be a little less um, worrisome, it seems to me. But um, we didn't do that. And so the trillions that they're printing now, or that they're uh, spending now, are coming on top of. Uh, trillion dollar deficits, and um, I uh, I think we're we're doing a real injustice long term to again to the future generations. One uh, less uh, known aspect of your biography outside of Indiana is that uh, you had a private sector career too. You were an executive at Eli Lilly, and I wonder if um, you're pleased that uh, big pharma is being recast in the mind of the public right now in terms of a sector of innovation and um, uh, aiding people who are ailing, saving lives, rather than just as a whipping boy for politicians. I am. I, uh, th- I did spend more, a good bit more time in private life than I uh, uh, had in, have in public, and I was uh, uh, thrilled, really, for the chance to work at a company like that, that uh, uh, we were in the business of saving lives and improving them, and uh, always been proud of that. No, I think that um, uh, it is important to see, and hopefully, uh, uh, it will remind people that that uh, cures and miracles of the kind we've come to take for granted don't just appear magically. It takes billions of dollars, especially the way we force them to do it in this country. Uh, uh, to produce a, a new medication or a vaccine. And, uh, you know, maybe one, I think one thing that may come out of uh, this terrible experience is that all over society we'll find, we'll identify things that we didn't need to do in the first place that we managed to get by without. And um, uh, maybe some of the, uh, I think, excessive uh, regulation and requirements in the uh, medical space could be part of that. He is former Indiana governor and current Purdue University president, Mitch Daniels. Mitch Daniels, thanks so much for joining us as always. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. The stories you need to know to start your day. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560, The Answer. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. 
Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-555-2085. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need to do is call Big Lou at 800-555-2085. Lou 